Hi folks, it's Titus Murray here from Southern Highland Structural Geology. Uh, today I'm in the Natai Wilderness, which is just near uh, Mittagong. Um, we're uh, out for a run in an all area that burnt out in January. You can see this fantastic regrowth with the fantastic rains we're getting through into our summer now. So today we're going to be talking about the Mako Field, which is in the Natuna Sea. Um, this is a data set that um, we put together based on Coro Energy's um, uh, investor relations pack. Hope you enjoy it. Um, we're going to be having a look at how we can use fault risk to better understand fluid contacts within the, this field in the shallow waters between Indonesia and Malaysia. So the data has come from uh, Coro Energy Q2 2020 uh, investor pack, and it gives us an idea about where the field is between Malaysia and Indonesia. And we're using this just as a quick look analysis for fault risk. Um, we haven't been paid to do any of this. Uh, they, 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 we produce these slides in this, in this video to un, so people can better understand how to use fault risk. Um, so Coro and Im Imperian haven't been involved with um, production of this, but um, we hope it shows they work in a good light. Um, and all the data is available. You know, th this is a really important thing that uh, all the work we're doing, we're showing what we're doing. Uh, there's no black box here. You can go and check our assumptions. Um, there's a likelihood we've made mistakes, but at least you can invalidate what we're saying. And that's that's a really important point with any fault seal calculation is that you know that you've got real data being used and you can see how it's being so, used. The investor pack gives us a really good understanding of the field. Uh, there's a nice depth structure contour map. I can read the contours. Uh, I can see where my fault is. I can see where my well data is. Um, yeah, so it's got a scale bar. Yeah. This is good work. This is what you should ex expect to see is faults, contour maps, and um, the, the base information. Um, they also provide a set of logs in the investor pack, so we've got an idea about this. Um, it's very recent Pleistocene Intermuda Reservoir, and so they've given us an idea of the stratigraphy. So again, that's what we need. Uh, gas water contact marked on here so we can see where the fluid contact is. We can see our north fault. The structure is not filled to spill. Uh, you can see there's plenty of... of um, extra space up in the north northeast and we've got at least 10 meters extra spill to the south so either the structure is underfilled or the north point, uh, fault is is controlling the structure now there isn't a lot of relief so I, that's why i've discounted top seal but anyway that, that's what we're going to be having a look at is is this what con controls the fluid contact here so using fault risk what we've done is we've digitized the foot wall up thrown side of the fault here, and we've digitized the hang wall down thrown side. Now, remember, we've got a set of videos out there that give you an idea of background of fault seal and also how fault risk works. So I'm not going to go through all of that, um, but here the, the separations. This gives us our displacement profile. There's our observed in black displacement profile and our theoretical profile in gray. And that's the theoretical profile is what we're going to use in the Monte Carlo simulation. So that's the basis of the Great. fault. In the data pack, they have given us decent stratigraphy. We can see what's going on. Pretty good understanding of what the logs are. <clears throat> We've got a, a diagram which shows the, the variation between the wells. This is a zigzag section. This Tambak one is the well that's closest to the fault. Um, so that's up in here. That's the fault in here, Tambak one. So we're still a fair way from the fault, but nonetheless, what it's showing is reservoir section, Top seal, so that's our reservoir seal pair, reservoir seal pair. And you can see to the south, we've got a thin thief zone. We've got a thicker thief zone as we move further north, east. Um, and so there's that thicker thief zone. And this looks as though that's the smoking gun for the um, what's controlling the fluid contact. And again, they're showing it in terms of a depositional environment. They're flattened on uh, the flooding surface, which is great. So we can go through and define our thief zone, our seal, and our reservoir. Really simple. This is basic geology, but it's important to illustrate what you're doing here. Too often we see fault seal calculations where there is no sense of the stratigraphy. It's important to get this right. And this is part of the interplay between what we need to do to get to, to do the fault seal calculation is making an estimate of what we think the geology will be up near the fault. And remember, it's not that there's geology on one side of the fault and a separate geology on the other side of the fault. The fault cuts through that those these set of layers. So you need to make sure you've got a sensible, consistent geology either side of the fault. You can obviously have thickening going across the fault. So if it's a growth fault, but then you have to make sure that thickening uh, is um, related to the displacement. 
So nonetheless, now, just to give you an idea about where we've been coming from, this is uh, published in our JOLSOC paper from uh, late last year, uh, 2019. Here we presented a set of fields uh, where we've gone through and had a look at different reservoirs. And this is the difference, this is the error between the observed fluid contact and the exposition leak point and SGR leak point. So you can see that in this plot that Bill Power produced, um, you know, the juxtaposition leak point has a smaller error. It, it, it does a better um, uh, better job of uh, estimating the fluid contact compared to the SGR, which will always, by nature, the SGR will always overpredict the fluid contact. And you can see there's a larger standard deviation on these. So that's what we're coming from. And and it's not just that small number. Um, we've got ourselves hundreds of cases. This is about 100 so cases, 100 cases that we put in our publication, um, which give you an idea about how variable um, the fluid con uh, the fluid error is. And and you can see um, a modal error is in the order of 18 meters. If we if we're if we're more than 18 20 meters out in terms of um, juxtaposition leak point and uh, f and uh, observed fluid contact, we start to think, well, what's going on here? What's happened with our stratigraphy and what's happened with our geometry? So. <clears throat> ran through the macro field, and sure enough, we get ourselves a mean 4.6 meter error. So this is using a 10 meter thick um, reservoir section. So we, we've we've made the reservoir slightly thinner. It may well be in the center of the field. We've got ourselves a channel. But these are the sorts of things we would go through and adjust if we were working with uh, an operator in a field. And we'd sit there and, and try and better understand the distribution of the thickness of the field of, of the of the of the reservoir section and top seal. And so we've got ourselves a thief zone and that thief zone is juxtaposed and that's that this is effectively the error. This is the difference we're measuring between uh, what fault risk is predicting as the gas water contact and what um, is the actual observed. And this is the distribution of error here we've got in our plot. You can see it isn't a, a perfect log normal distribution. There's probably a number of scenarios going on here. It may well be we get a leak point um, in some cases here on the southeast of the fault and in other places it will be in the northwest of the fault. So these variations mean we won't always get a log normal distribution. So it's, the results can be about, built up from a number of scenarios. But nonetheless, we've got ourselves a 4.6 meter error. So I'm sitting there looking at this going, well, yeah, the operators have done a good job. This map makes sense. Um, yeah, the fluid contact is what it is. It's um, we can make a lot of uh, inferences in terms of charge history. And what if we don't have a problem with charge, we probably don't have a problem with top SGR seal. SGR over predicts again. Instead of getting ourselves a four meter error, we've now got a fourteen point seven meter error. And again, you can see there's this bimodal distribution. This is the, these are the cases in here where SGR is low, so you're getting back to towards what we would say in juxtaposition. So we're seeing less than twenty five percent. SGR cutoff, and so that's part of the family. And then we're seeing the second distribution, the second lump of um, leak points, which some of these will be going out to the filter spill scenario. But nonetheless, this is why we get ourselves a separate, this this wider standard deviation. And you can see when we plot this up compared to our gel sock data, yeah, the blue is our juxtaposition case, and it, it's looking pretty good. The red isn't too bad compared to some of the other ones we've, we've, we've worked on, but still we can see we've got a much wider standard deviation. So this sits in with what we've seen from other fields around the world. So juxtaposition gets a, a tighter error, gets a better error compared to SGR. Now, this is imperfect data. We haven't worked with the operators. We've just taken what's in their investor pack, and, and they, should be, they should be applauded for actually putting enough data so that you know we can see what, whether they've done a good job or not, and they have. You know, we've snagged the map and we've um, the stratigraphy, so you know it isn't perfect, but still, nonetheless, this is good. This is good data, and I would say it's a good result. Um, yeah, you know, we can probably work more on inverting that stratigraphy to reduce the error and better understand what the uncertainty is. And there are some cases where we've actually gone through and, and said, well, w w um, what does the map need to be to match that fluid contact? So there's always that case of, well, you know, how how do we manage this? But out, out of the box, you know, we get a pretty good number. So this is one of the things we've been trying to think about is, you know, how can we use fault seal analysis to better improve your reserves? We can make your uh, gross rock volume, as we've shown in some of the earlier videos, we can make the gross rock volume better by um, uh, 
reducing the width of your fault polygons. So if we put the fault polygons on the diet and we make them skinnier, we can improve your gross rock volume. We can improve your gross rock volume by removing faults, as just we showed in the Pateka case in New Zealand. We said, hey, well, let's take this fault out. In this case, what we can do is we can improve the understanding that is on a field by tuning and thinking about the uncertainty on the stratigraphy and how that relates to juxtaposition analysis. So using fault seal analysis isn't always a case about killing your prospect. There's a lot we can do the way we can actually improve your reserves. So these results are repeatable. You know, this is absolutely vital. You know, the operators will be applauded for putting out enough data to go and check. Now, there are very few scientific papers on fault seal analysis that's allowed to check it, check what has been suggested in terms of fault seal. This is our paper from uh, late 2019, and look, we had maps in from that we'd got from from Exxon from the Exxon Mobil APG paper. We had maps from uh, the Australian government's world completion reports um, from Nopsema. Uh, so it's important that we actually see the data that's going into it, um, and not just take things on face value. <laughs> We're, we're scientists. We need to be able to invalidate our results. We need to be able to check our results. Um, so that's why we're going to keep doing these videos. Um, you know, in the last set of videos, we've um, produced examples for Minerva, Pateke, and then the Labrook Grove, Catnook, Hazel, Hazel Grove, and Redmond Fields. So we're going to keep producing these, these uh, videos. Now, we will make mistakes. There will be things that go wrong. That's the whole idea about science is we actually present our data and we present our assertions so we can all check on them. Well, I hope you enjoyed that talk about uh, Core Energy's uh, macro field. Um, and the next week, we're going to be putting set together um, some case studies for compression faults, in particular having a look at the elephant field and having a look at Kuziana. Hope you all have fun and we'll see you soon.